and some fellow dropouts. From lifestyle, fitness, beauty, travel, relationships, and self-care, Steph's got you covered. Welcome to your safe space, where you can stop what you're doing, relax, and let someone else do the heavy lifting for once. This is the Luxury Dropout Podcast with your host, Stephanie Joplin. Hey, fellow dropouts, welcome back to the Luxury Dropout Podcast with me, Stephanie Joplin. Today, we have a guest all the way from Brooklyn, New York. Yes, she is a born and bred New Yorker. She is the queen of Brooklyn, self-proclaimed human Yelp of New York City. She is a foodie and a singer and a dancer and a cannabis enthusiast. And we talk all about food and dating and traveling and the nightlife in New York City and how things were 10 years ago compared to today. Uh, So we had a very, very interesting chat and I cannot wait for you to enjoy this episode where I get to talk with Vanessa about our cultural similarities being both of the Italian background and we have a pretty great conversation about dating in our 30s and how she has never been on a dating app. Mind blown. She deserves, um, the lady deserves a medal, really. So hope you enjoy fellow dropouts. I'll see you at the end of the podcast. Welcome back, fellow dropouts. Today, I am chatting with the beautiful Vanessa Prescheto. Hello, oh. gorgeous. I know. Hello, I darling. I, you say it even <laughs> way better. Like, I need you to just come with me and say my last yes. name everywhere. I'll be like one of those <laughs> people at the ball that they announce the names. Like, may I present... Vanessa yes. Prescheto. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love that, actually. Yeah. I know you would. I know. Yeah. Um, so I want to tell everyone how you and I met, which was on Clubhouse. And yes. I, I think, did Clubhouse die? I haven't been on it in a long time. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I think it died. I know, my opinion. I mean, I was on it like every night. I'm like this. Yeah. I need Clubhouse. I want yeah. to talk shit yeah. Yes. I like to like talk about everything and I like to just talk crap, you know? Right. So, um, and then that's how we met. And I was like, I love her. She's awesome. <laughs> You're beautiful. Like we talk about everything. And then I don't know, after like that month or two, it just like fizzled, it just died out. Yeah. yeah. I think it just died out. My opinion. I don't yeah. even really know who goes on there anymore. I think it but. was definitely something that was needed needed during the pandemic because yes. we had nothing to do. So right. that was great. Um, but yeah, after it that, it wasn't like we were going out, meeting people at the bar and meet, making new friends. How would we make yeah. new friends through Clubhouse, which is cool. Well, and it served its purpose. Friends. Yeah, exactly. It served its purpose. <laughs> um, so that, wow. Uh, I can't believe how long ago that was now. I feel like it was ages ago, but I, maybe it wasn't. Was it earlier this year? I can't even remember. It was, it was earlier this year. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yeah, My, I need like a winter ish. I, need I know this, transplant. this year between last year, this year, <laughs> I don't even know what, what else is going to happen. What goes on. I'm over it. Like, I'm just over it. I'm like, can we just fast forward to like yes. happiness? Thank you. Yes, I know. <laughs> so Vanessa, you are born and bred in Brooklyn, correct? Yes. Okay. You are race. true bona fide New Yorker, which is you're actually the I second am. bona fide New Yorker I've had on my podcast. And I have to say cool. that there are like when I go through the different boroughs, like everyone acts very differently. It's it's crazy to me. And that is true. The it, it it's like th- they have specific personalities and I find it very fascinating. Yes. Listen, <laughs> New York City, there's so many different walks of life, so oh, it's yeah. like you will meet so many different people divert I mean like just all everything. So it's I like perfect. to say uh, I'm sorry to cut you off. I You're just fine. like I'm very I'm I'm a very like I like to let people know that I'm born and raised in Brooklyn because in Brooklyn. now Brooklyn has changed so much and like the people that 
live here currently, most of the people are not even from here anymore. And the original ones that were that are born here from here, you know, everybody moved, everybody moved to Florida, Jersey, or yeah. whatever. Right. And now it's like, you know, I meet people in Brooklyn and I'll like, for example, I'll go to Williamsburg and I'm like, oh, so where are you from? Like, I know they're not from here, you know? And they're like, oh, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm like, no, you're not. I'm like, where are you really from? Yeah. Ohio. I'm like, uh, okay, so you're not really from Brooklyn then. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So I like to express that I'm literally born here. My grandparents, um, they came to, Man- my mother grew up in Manhattan and my grandparents came to Manhattan in the fifties or the forties and the fifties. Mm-hmm. And my mom grew up in Manhattan and, you know, me and my sister were born here. Well, my rest of my siblings are from Brooklyn. So we're all real Brooklyn, New Yorkers. So and, and this is my, my pure ignorance is the majority of the Italian community in Brooklyn, or is that just a misconception? I think it's a misconception. I think most of the Italian Americans and the original, you know, whoever migrated here to Brooklyn, everybody, like my neighborhood is Diker Heights, Bensonhurst. So that's basically like the Italian community, which there are also, there were also other communities in Brooklyn. Um, but everybody pretty much moved out. Like everybody okay. moved to Staten Island, Jersey. And I, there's communities in Queens. I'm sure there's communities. I mean, there's in the Bronx, there's yeah. a huge community in the Bronx, you know, and I think Italians are all over. So yeah. Well, cause yeah, the best. but yeah, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're biased. We are, we're hot, we're cool. We have the best food, you know, <laughs> But might I might I add I am part Chilean, so my mother is Chilean, and I do have Hispanic in me. So wow, that's <laughs> cool. Okay, so yeah. you're gonna you're gonna have to tell my mom that you said Chilean because she. So my mom was raised in England, and she has a British accent when she speaks, and when she says Chile, Chile instead of saying Chilean, she says Chilean, and I'm like. Mom, it's not chili. People it's- say it's Chilean. Yeah. Chilean, Chilean. But I don't know. Chile, like the country. And Chile. Countries. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's cool. Yeah, so because are you- people say Chile, but it's really Chile. Yes, exactly. So are you close, like, with those mm-hmm. roots as well? Yeah. I mean, my mother is Chilean, you know, but like I said, my mom raised us here my mom pretty much was raised in manhattan her whole life so we grew up just the american way you know speaking english and you know my mom does speak spanish my father speaks like four languages so that's amazing but it it, it sucks because i wish i would have grew up speaking multiple languages you can always learn i think but i could all it's never it's too late right no it's definitely not (laughs) i understand it though i understand spanish and italian like i could comprehend the conversation and everything but for me to like reply block and reply back in a full sentence it never it just doesn't come out well for me but I could like respond in a one two word like okay yeah I know what you're saying (laughs) totally and that's what's important I feel like if you yeah if you did go to Italy then you would be able to get around and not have to necessarily like have a translator with you the whole time or something like that Definitely. So you are known as Miss Foodie V. You're known as the Queen of Brooklyn. There's so many different Ooh. cute little monikers that you've been given. Yes. Uh, so let's talk about Miss Foodie V because you are apparently you have told me that you are the human Yelp of your. <laughs> of, is it of the whole of New York or is it just Brooklyn? I'd say mostly Brooklyn. I know Manhattan. I mean. I've been going to Manhattan pretty much when I was like, well, since I was in the carriage, but I mean, like going there, partying, eating, meeting friends. I have so many friends that live in Manhattan that grew up in Manhattan. So, and now I'm exploring more boroughs. Um, I, like I said, like I'm traveling a lot more also. So, um, I do travel to Colorado a lot. I try to go to California because I have friends there. So I like to even explore in different states as well and nice. see what's the cool hot spots, what's the best pasta, 
desserts. And so I'm trying to explore more. Unfortunately, between last year and this year, you know, it's it's a little rocky, but I know. I'm getting out way more. And that's why I've been I've been stuck in like Brooklyn. And I'm like, oh, I'm <laughs> over it. Seeing the same that's food, okay. I mean, same you're... food. I'm like, all right. <laughs> but your posts are very appetizing. There's sometimes like people post food and you're just like, that doesn't really look that great, but your right. every single post that you post, I'm like, I want to freaking freaking eat that right now. Like, I want to eat. That. You want to come to Brooklyn? <laughs> yeah, like whatever you're posting, I'm Good. always wanting to eat. So I, I love your content. I think it's thank you on point. I love your captions. Like, you're very good about your presentation. Um, did you like expect to have this? You know, I mean, when you were, when you were first starting your Instagram, like, did you expect this is the way it was going to go? Not at all. <laughs> I mean, well, well, I just feel like I'm still building. I mean, yeah, I, I'm still building. Um, in the big, when I started it, so because so many people would come to me, Vanessa, I know you love food. I know you go to this restaurant, you go to these cool restaurants and <laughs> you know, your foods, everybody knows that I, that yeah. I know my foods, no matter what cuisine I eat everything. You know what I mean? I, I try to step out my box too. So, but I don't get too crazy because there's yeah. certain things I don't like to eat, you know, like certain animals and you okay. know, whatever. you're going to have to tell me what those are. Yeah. Um, but when I start so that's why I initially started the page because I'm like, you know what? Go to my Instagram. Since everybody has Instagram now, go to my Instagram. You're going to see what I post, where I go and what I order and what I think is delicious. And, you know, usually what I post too is everything that I love. Like there's people who do food reviews and they post things. They're like, oh, I went to this place and I hated it. Or, mm. you know, I ordered this and it was all right. You know what I mean? So whatever I post is what I like and what I enjoy. You know, I'm not going to post a restaurant and bash them you know because that's not who I am like if I didn't yeah. like it I didn't I won't go back you know and that's it I'm not gonna sit there and and like yelp and do a bad review no so you're, I'm only you're not a food, food good. you're not a food critic you're a food lover I'm just a food lover yes and that's why I started the page and people literally go to my page and they're like oh where's this I want to go here how was it what did you get you know so the Instagram is definitely cool for people to just see what I, where I go and what to order. That's basically it. And, yeah. and my following is is growing more and more. Too, I know. I so. see that. So do you ever get tired of, because so I used to live in Vegas and whenever people go to Vegas, they literally hit me up and they're like, can you give me a list of things to do and where to go? And I get it so much that I'm like, I want to start charging for this list. <laughs> I know. So, do you feel Same that way? Here. Okay. All the time. All the time. I'm like, all the time. Stop. I have friends. Yeah. I have friends from different states as well. And they're like, all right, I'm coming to New York. What do I, where do I got to yeah. go? What do I need to? I'm like, you're coming to New York City. You have a million bajillion things yes. to do, to eat, to see. I'm like, I could give you my rundown as much as I can, but. There's, there's so like, you need to come to New York city for like a good month or two to like be able oh. to do most things, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, you've been here, right? Yeah. Yes, of course. I, yeah. The last time I was there, I was only there 36 hours. I was there for my friend's, um, heavyweight fight in the UFC. He was fighting for the title and I, 30, literally 36 hours. And I still managed to get two really freaking good meals in somehow. So, um, and what were I, your first two meals? And I hope it was pizza. <laughs> <laughs> one was pizza. One was okay. Pizza. Good. Yes. And then the second one was, um, I went to, why am I blanking on the name? Um, what's it called? It's like my favorite restaurant and I'm blanking. Oh, it's, a uh, well, in Italian, you would say Cipriani, but I, people oh, say yes. Cipriani. but I went to the Cipriani. one in, uh, so Cipriani in, the train station. It was, where was it? it was, um, in Midtown. I think that's on 42nd street. Yeah. It was, was at, it? at grand central. Like, grand central. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it was so good. I went with my friend Vincent who I met in Maui, which is so wild, but he's going to, he's going to film school in NYC. And so he, and I went there and, um, 
we loved it. It was just so delicious every single bite. Like I had spaghetti, like spaghetti alle vongole, you know, with clams. Mm, and that's my it was, favorite. It's I my love favorite. clams it's and a clam sauce. Oh, uh, yeah. It's so good. <laughs> and it's, it's Come hard. Here so we can eat. <laughs> yes. Yes. I know. I'm going to visit you, but I was so, yeah. over, I was really overwhelmed though. Like walking around, like I went to fifth Avenue to go check out everything just cause I'd never really been. And yeah. I was just so overwhelmed. I was like, help me like it was just yeah it's a lot yeah it's a lot lot. Manhattan is a lot (laughs) sure that's why Brooklyn like where I live is very quiet yeah it's more of a residential yes you know so that's why it's like where I live in Brooklyn like people are like oh you're so far in Brooklyn I'm like Mm. listen Brooklyn is a big borough but where I live I love my neighborhood like yeah you know, I have my neighbors and everybody looks out for each other and it's quiet. And I just, I love it. Like I I had many opportunities to probably move to Manhattan and I was like, I can't do it. Yeah. So tell me about when you were younger and you were in Manhattan a lot and you were doing the bar scene and, you know, you told me, you told me it's never going to be the same. Like, tell me about that time in your life. I don't think so. Okay. So, well, hmm, we're going to go back and I'm not going to say my age, but whatever. Um, so <laughs> I've been party cause now I'm like thinking back. I'm like, Oh shit. Um, I'm the same. I've, I started partying when I was like 15 years old, mm-hmm. you know, 16 years old. Maybe I used to go to like the teen nights and shit. Oh, girl. I'm like, same. whatever. So that's how like, I started, like, I'm like, okay. Like I thought it was cool at 15 partying. I'm like, what am I doing? Don't you ever wonder to yourself, like, how did we not get kidnapped and like roofied and died? Oh my <laughs> God. I had this conversation with my girlfriend the other day. And she, we're reminiscing about us going out and yeah. like all the, sh- all the shit that we've gone through, especially <laughs> growing up in Brooklyn, Manha- going to Manhattan on the train, yeah. like nothing dressed up, like ready to go. And I'm like, how they, Thank God, I pray to the Lord that nothing happened to us. I know. But we're we we also oh we're God. crazy. My God. But <laughs> listen, let me tell you, we had the best time. So like by the time I was like 16, 17, that's when I, my sister gave me her old ID because then she got her new driver's license. Of course. But it was still the state active ID, so it was still good for use. So she's like, here, take it. I'm like, okay. <sighs> That was it. It was a wrap. And I just started partying. Like I was going to all the clubs in the city and Queens and here and there. And, and that's how like I connected with a lot of people. And then I made like friends that who were in the music industry. And, you know, I, you know, I have, I say that I have so many friends, but a lot of people are like acquaintances and, you know, like you don't usually speak to somebody every day, but you know, like when you see them, it's like, oh shit, like, hey, what's up? Like, I haven't seen you in so long. How's everything? And it's just it's like, you know, what it was. So I've met a lot of people through nightlife, you know, in all types of industries. So, which is yeah. cool. Um, I party with celebrities, <clears throat> but that's how I got into the scene. And then by the time I was actually 21, I was like, all right, you know, my friends, everybody was doing the promoting thing, promoting yes. clubs, promoting yes. all these parties. Yes. So I would always just be like, all right, let's do it. You know, I would have my table, invite people and this and that. You would and post it time. on your Facebook or whatever. Yeah, or MySpace, my whatever space. it was at the time. <laughs> yeah. God, we're old. Flyers. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. We're flyers. About MySpace, flyers. We don't Flyers. Know. I'm dead. So that's how I started. <laughs> and then that's how I met people and, and the owners and managers and securities. Like I would make... I would always make friends with the security guards. That was like my way in. You know, it's like like the big bear black guy. And I'm like, what's up? Like, you know, I'm like this little thing. And they're like, oh, what's up, V? And they'd be like, come on in. And I'm like, that's it. Like, yeah, that's how I was in Vegas. Yeah, you just make your way in. Because I went to college in Vegas. And so I think I was like probably 19 or 20. And there was like the security guard named Johnny Goldchains. I mean, you can guess what he looked like. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, big guy with gold chains uh, and definitely Italian. And he was the security guy at Pure Nightclub um, at the, at Caesars when it was around. And that those were like the glory days of like yeah. the clubs. And I think I know what you mean because I feel the same way about Vegas, like how nightlife is just so like fake now it's like not the same it's not the same nobody dances anymore I'm like 
I, when I was partying at 16, everybody was dancing. Forget sweating. it. it sweating. Sweat, sweating. Forget sweating. Mm. You were coming out like you came out the sauna. You come yeah. out the club, everybody's dripping. Yes. I'm like, oh, that's how you know it was a good night. You know what I mean? Now everybody just wants to sit there and, and, and look at me in my bottle. Like, you're so boring yeah. and on the phone. You Go stay home and do it on the phone, you know? I know, yes. But... Um, we had our so disposable cameras. Said, like, yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Oh, I miss those. <laughs> I know. Me too. Or the <laughs> digital them, camera. Yeah. The digital the camera digital. Like, with the, the wrist. Digital. Like you had to with hold the wrist. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. The good old days, you <laughs> the know? Good old days. So, so that's why I just feel like now, especially after the pandemic and everything, I mean, mm -hmm. literally the club scene is just. Oof. It's not what it used to be. I'd rather, that's why I just, I love to dine out. I love to go to like a cute old fashioned bar and that's it. Yeah, that's you nice. Know? Yeah, I mean, I love to dance. I love to party and, and you know, but. Yes. You love to sing anymore. too, right? I do love to sing. Nobody knows that about me. I love to <laughs> sing too. I'm the same. I'm like, I'm a freaking star, like in my bathroom right now. I That's love how it. I am. Yeah. Yes. So what yes. do you like to sing? What is your favorite stuff to sing along to? I mean, I love R&B. Yes. Like, I mean, we could go back to like Mariah Carey. Yeah. I love singing like Keisha Cole. Yeah. Like, I, I, I listen to everything. So I'm not like... Growing up, I listened to obvious. I, I have a older sister. She's ten years older than me. So growing up, I would just listen to whatever she was listening. So it was mostly hip hop, rap, yeah. R and B. You know, the nineties, early nineties, and then. But I listen to everything mm. now. Like I love all types of music. I love jazz. I love Spanish music, reggaeton, reggae. Um, I just started listening to more like Italian rap too. And I'm like, yo, I'm like, this shit is hard. I'm like, I like it. You know, yeah. I have one song that I, I play like every day just to, when I jump in the car, I'm like, this is my song to go. And then I'll switch it up. And then I start singing on the highway. Nice. I love that. <laughs> and it's funny because when I'll be in the car with someone and an Italian song will come on on my playlist and I start singing it, they kind of look at me and they're like, the fuck is? they're like okay grandma from italy <laughs> yeah but it's like but it's like but a, it's cool it's like I either a rap it. it'll be a rap song or it'll be like eros ramazzotti which is like really like old school romantic like yeah kind of i love stuff. that i do too um but it's they're just cute. like who are you and what is this like they right like they don't think to them I, sometimes i feel like americans don't think to themselves like that there's rap in other countries ever, you know? <laughs> right, exactly. So, yeah, so I'm glad that I got to go to Italy growing up and I was exposed every summer. They come out with this, they came, they had this, it was kind of like Lollapalooza. It was called Festival Bar. And every summer, all of the, the people who were at, I don't know if they were at the festival or they just picked the best songs of the year, but they were all on this double CD and there was two of them. Like one was red and one was blue. And my sister and I used to get one red, one blue, like every summer. So we could add it to our collection. And it was, I think it was true. I think it was the best songs of the year. Cause some, some That's of awesome. them were like Backstreet Boys and yeah, TLC. like a cool mixtape. Yeah. But then there was like also <clears throat> Spanish singers and there was, um, you know, Italian singers and there was French singers and all kinds of like a melting pot. And I That's got exposed cool. to a lot of really awesome Italian music that way um, growing up. So I love it. my sister and I both. So like now we both recognize, you know, that type of music, which is, I, I think it's cool. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. I feel like people should explore more musical, you know, yeah. wise, because you know, after a while, it's like, I've been listening to hip hop rap my whole life. And I'm yeah. like, I, you know, I still listen, don't get me wrong. If I want to listen to like a Biggie song out of nowhere, I'm going to throw it on, you know, but now it's like, you know, it's so diverse, you know, like you got to explore more just yes. like food and, yes. and, and travel and music, you know, it's okay. But tell me, tell me, do you do this? Cause I do this is when I find a song that I really like, I will play it until Yep. Like my ears bleed. Do you have, yep. do you do this? Okay. All the time. So right now for me, it's the, that song, Justin Bieber's new song. And what's his name? Kid Leroy, like that stay song. 
Yes. It's like, I'll do the same. Na, 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 yeah. Na, Listen, one. I love Justin yeah. Bieber. I'm I love anything Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. I swear to God. But he, he got seen, so good. Oh my God. Have you seen, it was like a private concert they did at the win, like right after everything got lifted and it was like UFC fights that weekend. And then Justin and Kid did this like little private concert at in Vegas. And I've seen it on TikTok like a lot. And I get so hyped when I see them like jumping on stage and I'm like, this song is so good. Like I so can't, good. I can't stop listening to it. And it gets me so <laughs> hyped and I listen to it on repeat. And the other day at my photo shoot that I was doing, I think maybe you saw, I just had it on repeat and the photographer was like, like looking at her phone, like wanting to change it. And I'm just like, <laughs> I really like this song. <laughs> but we're going to listen to it like another hundred times. So uh, uh, just bear with us. <laughs> I know. I, I play it so oh, no, much. All the time. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm like that when, when I jump in the car, it's like, that's it. I'm in my own world and nice. the song is on repeat. The song is on repeat, you know? So okay, good. I'm the so same I'm way. Not, I'm not alone then. Okay, good. No, you're not alone. I'm with you, sister. Good. <laughs> so I want to kind of, I want to go over to family dynamics, especially growing up, um, you know, in an Italian and Latino household. <laughs> Tell me about the expectations of a young lady of our generation, right? The expectations of our generation is real different from the expectations of our parents' generation. So were things expected of you in the community, like by your elders, by your family, by your peers, by, by the opposite sex? Like, do you feel you struggled with that? Do you feel like you fit in with it? Tell me your experience. So I grew up with a single mom, you know, I didn't grow up with mom and dad. So it was just usually, uh, always my mom and my sister growing up pretty much my whole life. I've always kept in contact with my father, but like we never had a relationship. So now we're closer than ever. I mean, you know, I broke the seal and we're all such a tight knit family now. So it's like growing up with a single mom, I guess was a little different as well because, you know, my mom worked two, three jobs, you know, she had to raise me, my sister. Then once my sister moved out, it was like, you know, then it was just me. So I think it was more looking at my mom and, and growing up, you know, with like a struggle and, and, you know, making ends meet and living day by day. And, and as I got older, I'm like, you know what, like, I want to break that. That's not, I want to make sure that my mom's good. Everybody's good and not having to bust my ass. And, you know, so, and it's funny because now our parents are old school, obviously, you know, um, my father, he's like, you know, everybody, all my siblings are married. Everybody has kids, has kids, Same. having kids. I'm the only one. They're Same. like, you're the only one. And I hear it all the time. I'm like, I don't want to hear it anymore. I'm like, leave me alone. You know what I mean? Like if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I don't care. Like okay. I'm happy with my life and that's okay. Yeah. But like, you know, my father is like, all right, Vanessa, like you're next. And I'm like, yeah, where's the guy? I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, you're like, is he going to fall from the ceiling? Because I don't know. I'm like, well, whatever. These guys, New York guys are terrible anyway, that's but, that's another, but that's another story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm getting, I'm going to get there. <laughs> we'll get there. So yeah, basically, I mean, I've always, Growing up, my mom always taught my sister and I to always give back. You know, we always Thanksgiving, whether, you know, because we know what it is to not have much. So Thanksgiving holidays, we would always give back to the community, you know, homeless, feed the hungry. Um, We always do donations with clothes and things like that. So in that sense, that's like me giving back to my community, neighborhoods, people who are in need because, you know, growing up, wasn't easy for me, you know, my, but my mom did the best and she made it happen. So that's amazing. And yeah, I mean, I feel like also, that's why I also like to say like, I'm a Brooklyn girl. I'm from here. I'm born here. You know, I, you know, I'm street smart. I know a lot of things. I know a lot of people, you know, whatever, but it's just like, people do expect a lot nowadays, a lot. And I'm just like, It's not what it used to be back then. And if anything, it's like way more hard than what it was back then. You know, I feel like it was so simple at those times. Everything's so expensive now. Food's expensive. I went to the supermarket. I spent like $60. I'm like, I don't know, four things. And I'm like, 
or what is this? You know, yeah, like, I did grocery shopping yesterday for like a full week of groceries and I spent over $200. Yeah. I was like, and it wasn't yeah. even like anything extravagant. Like I, no, I just bought just normal, like bullshit. normal stuff. But like in terms of expectations, like for example, here in Houston, there's a really tight knit Italian community of Italian American people. I want to say not necessarily pure Italian, but de- generational Italian people. Right. And if you, so my, so for example, like if you left your car at your boyfriend's house or your boyfriend's mom's house overnight, then the next day you would be a slut. Like for example, so were there thing like, was that, was, does that exist it, where you are or not? I feel like, well, my block has changed rapidly in the past, like maybe five to 10 years. Yeah. But even back then, like there's still the people on my block that's been living here for like over 30, 40 years Mm -hmm. more, you know, like, and it passes down down through generation of the family. So I feel like maybe back then it was more like, oh, there she goes, the walk of shame, you know? (laughs) Do we have the early birds that are still oh, sitting shoot. on the porch at like six in the morning and I'm coming back from the club and they're like, oh, there she goes. Yeah. And I'm like, good morning. I'm like, yeah. I don't give a shit. I'm like, whatever, you know? Yeah. But yeah, there's still, you know, there's still people. I mean, listen, no matter what, no matter what age, no matter who you are, everybody is always going to have something to say. Of course. Like, you know? Of course, yeah. And that's why I'm just like, I don't give a shit. I'm like, I know so many, you know, there's people who love me. There's people who hate me. There's jealousy, you know, oh, who is she with now? Who is she, you know, people think I'm dating this person, that person. I'm like, I'm single. I could do whatever <laughs> I want. I'm like, I don't care what nobody has to say. And, you know, I, I know what I do and I take care of myself and yeah. that's it. What is it to you? You know what I mean? So in that sense, you know, I feel like no matter what, there's always going to be someone that's going to see you and say this, this, and that. And it like, seems oh, like New York is goes. too is too big for this thing that he. I mean, Houston's huge, but for some reason, it's like this community of people. They they're all in each other's business, and they all know everything that's going on. Yeah, and I just was dating this Italian guy um, that we, we broke up in March. Um, and he, like the community just like knew all about his drama with his ex, like baby mama and how, like, it it was just all over Facebook. Like it was just, Oh no, that's, that's, yeah. Like it's real, it's real messy. And so we had to keep everything on the down low, but then it turned into like, that was just hiding me from his ex. Like it just was oh, really no. shady kind of yeah, stuff. No. I just didn't know if like, you know, I'm trying to understand how New York Italians operate. So, you know, like if there's that, cause you know, you watch, you watch shit like the Bronx tale and then you're just like, is this real? Or is this just like, <laughs> So it's just the movies. I, like I feel to, like, yeah. well, for like, well, A Bronx Tale is definitely one of my favorite movies. That's like oh. top probably three for me. Oh, amazing. As amazing. far as like mob movies, <laughs> yes. you know, whatever. Um, but like that, like, yeah, like what A Bronx Tale was, like that little community, like it's like what my neighborhood could look like and be. Okay. I think it was, my neighborhood was that. Now it's not so much. Everybody okay. pretty much moved out. You know cool. what I mean? So. Cool. That's the thing when you're in this like little community or neighborhood and his mom knows your mom and (laughs) his aunt knows your uncle and oh, this one's cousins and this and this and that, you know, but nowadays it's not like that anymore, at least for me over here. And people think New York City is so big, but when you're from here and born here and you know, like a lot of people, it gets very, very small and it's like... It gets very small. So it's not even just like Brooklyn. It's like Manhattan, you know. Yeah, of course. Of course. You know. And now social media, that's why things have changed because social media is like everybody sees if you're posting it, everybody knows what you're doing, where you at, who you're with, what you're eating, you know. That's why you have to be what they think who you're with. Strategic with your posts. (laughs) Right. Exactly. It's like, you know. So. so going back to dating, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the dudes in New York City. Let's give me, yeah, give me, give me that. That's what I want to hear about. Oh, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's hard out here Listen, for I mean, it really is. I think it's hard out here for us girls in general. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think, I don't even really think it's New York City. Like, 
Like I went to Colorado. I know Colorado is like so random, but no, it's not. That's where it. my best. That's where my best friend lives. So I go out there a lot, and like when I do go out there, I'm out there for like a good month or two months or whatever. Nice. You know. So I take full advantage, and it's more for just like get out of New York and relax, right? And but then after the few times, she's like, maybe you'll meet like a nice, cute tech guy out here, and I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, maybe, maybe not. I'm like, I don't really care. See, I'm that type of girl that I don't go looking. Like I just you know, whoever I meet, whoever I connect with, or like if they're feeling me or whatever, you know, you don't do the the dating apps or anything. I've never done a dating app ever. Oh, wow. Oh, you need a a medal. (laughs) (laughs) I know I never did it, but, but I, I, um, well, also I was in a five, almost six year relationship that ended in 2019. Okay. So that was a big gap in there. So, um, but I had Facebook for a long time. I deleted it in 2019 for reasons. Mm-hmm. And then I just got Facebook back like this past winter, I believe. Okay. And I couldn't tell you how many mess like, you know, you see people from like you went to school with and like, all right, you know, I'll only accept people that I really know or like mutual friends. Like, oh, I probably know him or her from whatever group of friends. <laughs> But I couldn't tell you how many messages I recently, like in the past like two months, I mean, just like, guy, 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 guy. What's up, you're gorgeous. What's up? How are you doing? What's up? Can we hang out? Can we, you know, what are you doing? Who are you, are you single? And all these things. And I'm like, and all these guys, which is kind of weird because all these men, like I could see like something's wrong with them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And I'm like, how are they finding me? And they're all like ready to just like, let's go. I want to hang out with you. What? Here's my number. And all. so what I've noticed is that all these men or guys or boys or whatever they are, yeah, all of them have kids, mm-hmm. like multiple kids. And I'm yeah. like, wow. I'm like, you're, you know, like, I want to say like, you got balls. Cause yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, look, I'm not, I'm, I don't have kids, you know, I love children, don't get me wrong. If I end up meeting a guy who maybe has a child, I'm open to it, you know what I mean? But when you have like three or more and it's like, what happened, you know, like you, I don't know, it's a lot for me. It's a lot for me and just me personally. And I feel like also, and I, that's why I never really did dating websites too. I get, I, I was more scared. Like, is this really this person or like, how does this work? You know, I got, that's why she's like, I know I got stories. <laughs> you yeah. know, you so already know my I never facial. did it. You already, I know. I already know. I read your whole face. <laughs> yeah. Like you yeah. Know my facial expressions. Yeah. I've had some really yeah. crappy online dating experiences, but I've been doing it like on and off for quite a while. Cause I've been single. I mean, I've had relationships that are like eight months, six months, a year, but nothing long-term nothing. probably yeah. since I want to say 2010. It's been quite a while. So I have been on the, I've been on like eHarmony and match.com and how is that? Well, I don't, those were like, this was a while ago that I was on those sites. Uh, And I think the most mentally disturbed men were on those sites. Like even what I thought, even more than like Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, like that they, they were literally, and I, okay. I was much heavier like I had, this was probably, you know, I would say good 50 pounds more, but I was still beautiful. And I never even, You're, first of all, <laughs> I've seen your pictures from before Thank and you. I see you now. And no matter what, like you're a gorgeous girl, I, you. I must say, Thank you. and, and you're doing great. Thank you. I see you on your journey and you're doing amazing. It's tough You're right welcome. now because I'm extremely injured from this freaking car accident. But if we can get past I it, know. we'll get back to it. Um, but I was yes. much heavier, and I and I I can admit that. But at on the other hand, I never I never questioned that when I was dating. Like I never said to myself, "This guy, you know, is going to think I'm fat." Like that never went through my head, right? Especially if okay, he's good. if he's coming on to me, like talking All to right. me. Because my pictures were pretty accurate. I never like Photoshop 
you know, put, put Photoshop pictures or, you know, tr- like I always put like more to love, like, you know, like that kind of yeah, topic. Yeah. So we went to dinner and this guy ended up like, you know, staying over with me. We went to brunch the next day. We went, um, antiquing and stuff. And then this was like near July 4th. And I was like, Hey, do you want to come to our country club with me for the July 4th, like fireworks? And he's like, yeah, I'll go. And then the day of he texts me and he goes, Hey, I have a question. Do you ever plan on losing weight? Because, uh, I don't know if I can be with you if you're going to be that fat. And I like, I didn't respond to it. And then he got angry that I didn't respond. Oh, hell and he goes, no. I was so embarrassed because you could barely get around the table. And <gasps> people were he looking. He said that? People oh, were, yeah. you're lu- he's lucky that I wasn't around as a friend because I would probably beat the shit out of him. He was like, oh, he, shit. <laughs> yeah, I know. He goes, no, because that's people, fucked up. You don't just say that. Like, that's, no. you could keep that comment to yourself. That's, that's what I'm that's saying. He was, he was mental, like, something was mentally off with him because he was like, people were staring at us, you fat fuck. And I was like, are you okay? Like, what? Are he's you okay? like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, And this is someone who I'd spent like the evening, the morning, antiquing, like all this stuff. I'm like, so if I was that fat and repulsive, like, why did you spend all that time with me? Why didn't you just like, why didn't you just not even pick me up for the date at all? Like, yeah. Or you could have just spent that one day and then that's it. Like, hey, listen, I, I like you as a friend, you know, that's it or whatever. Whatever it is. You could you. You could have ghosted me. Like that would have even been preferable to what he did. Seriously. But that was like, that was probably the worst experience I had. Um, The other ones have just been like, there was one guy I remember from Tinder who we were, we talked for a while. That's a swipe, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And this was like kind of when it had first come out, it wasn't so much of like just a hookup. It was more for dating right and and so he and I were talking and he was kind of like not love bombing me but it was pretty close to that like hey I really like you I really picture you like being a mom to my child like that type of emotionally intense stuff and we talked for like two weeks before we met because I had this rule at the time that I talked to someone for two weeks before we meet So he came over finally to pick me up and he like sat down and had a straight panic attack. Like he was just sitting there quiet and I was like, are you okay? And he's just like, I can't, I've got to go. I can't do this. And I was like, oh, (laughs) what? (laughs) Like, and it wasn't about my body or anything because at this time I had lost weight. So I was like, okay, I'm not fat anymore. So what is it? Maybe he just got really nervous. I think that he wasn't over his ex or something is what I have come to understand Uh, since. But he panicked and just like froze and left and, and and then ghosted me, which is fine. But I just was like, why do you, and I talked about this so much yesterday on my Instagram story about love bombing and marriage bombing. It's so fucking abusive. It is. It's so it abusive is. to like, especially to you, you know, a woman is very sensitive and very like romantic. Like 100%, I am yeah. to talk to me like that, to tell me like this guy, you know, the guy that I talked about yesterday to tell me you want to marry me or to tell me you see me as the mother of your child, your, your, you know, your, your kid or whatever. And then to turn That's around huge. and you don't act- just say that. No, you don't just say that. You you might say like, I love you to get a woman in bed, maybe. Okay, fine. But you don't say marriage. You don't say kids. You don't say those things. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. to me, that's just like an act of either narcissism or your brain damaged or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So those are, those are very negative experiences that I've had. And I've had a few couple others like that. But mostly it's just been like, we'll go on a date or we'll talk for a while and it just fizzles. Mm-hmm. So- that's the most same yeah. same I mean like I was in my relationship like any relationship it was amazing in the beginning and nice. like you know it's always it's the honeymoon stage as they say right and then in the end it was just bad you know and you know I, I loved that kid to death and yeah. you know I, I you know I don't hate him but you know I respect him or whatever if I see him in the street 
what's up, you know, whatever, yes. which I haven't, you know, I'm not going to be like an asshole, but at the same time, like the breakup was bad. Like it was bad. I was, you know, heartbroken. Like oh. I had to move back. It was like a whole thing. And after the fact, he tried to like, whatever, I'm not going to get into it, but yeah, like, you <laughs> yeah, I, I, because it's too long and uh, whatever it is, what it is. Cause it's already done and he's moved on and you know, I've tried, it took me a long time to move on, you know? It looked like he had moved on fast and me, I was just like still fucked up about it. And um, anyway, the moral of the story is, is that he kept trying to come back, come back, come back, bring me, you know, do. trying to take me back. And I said, once I was done, that was it. I'm not going back. It's It was too much. You know, there was a lot of time invested. Yes. But it was, it was just so toxic that I wasn't happy, you know, Good. and even that, I let a few months pass and I, and I tried it and I was like, you know what? Let's see how it goes. And I was like that one time I was like, no, nah, that's it. You I have was that, like, you know, it's like a sick feeling in your gut that you're just like, this isn't good. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so ever since, so that was in 2019 and, and it took me a little while to like date and talk to people because I was still crushed and, you know, it was a, it was a very hard breakup. Yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, and now recently I'm like dating around, but it's like, oh, I'm over it. Like these guys yeah. are so annoying and they suck or they're corny or they're this or they're just like, come over. And I'm just like, oh, I'm like, OK, like, look, everybody ne has their needs. Right. But yes. I'm just like, whatever. I'm like, can so can Prince Charming sweep me off my feet, please? Thank you. I think no. I just need to go move somewhere. I, I think that's what it is. <laughs> New York sucks. Guys, don't come here to look for a guy. <laughs> I won't. They I, suck. I don't even look. I mean, I, I'm on Hinge I mean, that's the right thing. Now. I don't look. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't look, you know? Yeah. It's just whatever comes or, like, you know, whoever I meet, friend, mutual. Let me introduce. I have so many friends that are like, oh, I want you to meet this guy or this guy. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Yeah. Like, All right. You know, but. All of my friends in relationships, I'm like, does your guy have any friends? They're like, no, I'm like nobody that's worthy no. of you. And I'm like, God, why does nobody have friends that are good? Like nobody. Nobody. Yeah. yeah. No. So I, I am on hinge right now. Um, and I do have a date planned for Saturday. Um, cool. so his name is Sandro. So like I'm into Ooh, it, like, you know, nice. some Italian okay. vibes. Um, okay. he's, yeah, yeah. He's like Colombian and Italian and Haitian and some other things, Ooh. but he, yeah. So, and he's like age appropriate. Um, <laughs> good so, it's okay you know, i but, just uh, with the age thing age is nothing but a number that's, that's true. how i feel that's true but the last guy i dated was like in his mid-20s and it just was not it was not okay yeah i don't know it's too it's i never too. i've never dated anyone around my age or younger uh -huh. i've always went older at least uh -huh. like a good years older you know what I mean not that I'm saying that I like like I used to but I mean, now but I don't discriminate no but now that I'm older I feel like I look younger and I act younger so I'm attracting younger men I feel like that's what's going on I'm getting a lot of younger men as well not for yeah. nothing like 25 26 <laughs> right. and I'm like oh shit I'm like am I a cougar now how does that work <laughs> I know that's how I feel I'm we're like, talking like we're speaking like we're like 50 years old but I know. it's okay <laughs> whatever I mean whatever <laughs> I hope I look this good when I'm 50 like that'd be great oh we will you will <laughs> girl if we're still single we're gonna make a pact right now if we're still single by 50 <laughs> what are we doing we're traveling the fucking world together oh, that's okay, it. Perfect. I don't know. <laughs> okay bye. I'm in. why do we that's have to it. wait till 50 like can we do it at 40 right, maybe like 40 yeah, yeah. 40 is not too far along. No, no, we got we got a few we got a few years. Um, to we got go. a few more years. <laughs> okay, so yeah, make it tell up. me if you had a last meal on earth, what would it be? <sighs> Including I drinks and dessert and everything, questions. like start to, start to finish. It could be particular, like from a restaurant or anything you want. Just tell me exactly what you'd have. Oh, the hardest question in the world. The I know. Most two hardest questions in the world. What's your favorite pizza? And I'm like, oh, uh, like, uh, and, my, what, and that question. My hardest question is, how are you? Because I'm just like, 
I'm honestly pretty bad. Um, how about you? <laughs> how are you? We could get in. How am I? I could go for like 20 minutes about yeah. how I am. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. So last meal on earth. If God forbid my on my yes. deathbed. God forbid. Let's do another time. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, okay, definitely pizza. Okay. And okay, so I'm gonna have to get a Sicilian from a, a Sicil. Oh my god, I'm blanking out. Don't okay, worry. Okay, because now time. I'm thinking about all these foods. Okay. Take your time. Definitely need a steak. So I'm gonna have to get a steak. And a burger from Peter Luger's. How, how, what's the temperature of your steak? I'm more of a medium rare. Same. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, I don't, don't, I can't talk to you. You can't be my friend if you like, well done. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. What's the point, right? No. I could do medium. Medium or medium rare. Medium. Medium rare. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be steak and a burger from Peter Luger's. Okay. Medium, medium rare. Okay. Um, okay, Sicilian square okay. or Sicilian pie. I'm dying, so I need the whole pie. <laughs> yes. Um, from from over here in Brooklyn, Da Vinci's on 18th Avenue. Okay. Because they have my, which a lot of people say they have the best Sicilian. Oh my God. Um, and then like a nice round pie. Oh, I don't know. There's so many good places. Oh this God. is what happens when you grow up in Brooklyn because there's so many good pizza spots. I'm drooling. So I know it's it's hard. You see how I get? I'm like, Mah! yes. Ah! When it come, when I start talking about food, it's like, Mah! yes. Um, I don't know. There's there's a lot of good pizzas or here in Brooklyn. So if I'm gonna choose a round pie, it's gonna be from probably like two or three places. I'm going to say Crispy Pizzeria. Um, I'm going to say Bay Ridge Pizza on Fifth Avenue because that's my boy and he does make delicious pizza. Um, and then there's Pizza Wagon. There's Leo's. There's too many freaking pizzas. Okay. The long and last then, meal. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> I have a lot. I could eat. If it's my last day, I will oh. eat everything. Oh, know? I I understand. And dessert, got to have a cannoli, got to have a rainbow cookie, tiramisu, and a cheesecake. Okay. And to drink? Drinks. I don't drink soda. So that's, okay. that's, I only drink sparkling water and it sounds fancy, but I really no, don't drink soda. No, it doesn't, uh, <laughs> doesn't sound fancy. Like, I have some in my sparkling place? water, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, what I was drinking was a lemonade sparkling water. Okay, to drink. Oh, that's so hard. Well, I like alcoholic drinks. Okay. So, okay, well, I have to have a big bottle of wine. Okay. And I would say it has to be Chianti. Okay. Or a a nice, if I'm going to go with white, probably a Pinot Grigio. So I'll do both, a Chianti and a Pinot Grigio bottle. Sure, sure. Right? But then I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I I love my Casamigos and pineapple. Is that being too crazy? No. (laughs) Like, fuck it. I'm going to get fucked up too. Yeah. And last but not least, I know it's not food. I do smoke weed. I'm a big believer. I'm a big, you know, person that, embrace it like yeah I don't think it's a drug like people's like oh my mom's like it's a gateway drug I'm like (laughs) a gateway drug I don't know you know and I'm just like so I definitely need like the best okay okay now when you smoke weed is it to calm or is it to like make yourself up no to calm to calm okay to relax yeah I like to don't get me I'm so People do, people like to just do that just to like go home and go to sleep, right? Mm -hmm. I could do it. I could do a million things outside, drive, go here, go there and get everything done. And I'll be like, okay, now it's a nightcap. And you know, I'm one of those. Then then I've been doing it for years. So that's why. Then there's people like me who like I ate a quarter of a piece of a cookie one time and I was like, different. I know it's different. But I, but literally I like 12 hours later, I was Googling, can you overdose on weed? Like for real. (laughs) And for 36 hours, I was like in a haze. Like I could not get out of it. So I, like, I always tell people that I'm allergic because it's just more simple. 
than like explaining that I'm a freak who can't handle it. But and that's I, okay. Yeah. You know, I hate when people are like, they get all like, you know, oh, well, I don't, you know, I, I would never judge anybody. You know yeah. what I mean? The only people that I judge is the people who judge the smokers and of the course. people, you know, don't judge. So what? It, that's what you choose not to do. And that's fine. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> if I want to do it, it's a lifestyle for me, in my opinion. I have to. If anything, I need it because I do. I get anxiety. I get like, you know, I get a little crazy sometimes that I'm like, all right. But when you say you need it, like, do you feel like that's an addiction? I don't know. Yeah. I don't think so. I'm just because, curious what you think. Yeah, I don't, I don't, in my opinion, I don't think so. I have okay. my girlfriend, she's like, wake up afternoon all day into the night you know yeah and I could do that and be okay but like I don't choose to do that you know what I mean like I could go a whole day and be like cool like okay you know yeah but I had I had this guy that I was seeing like he would train mixed martial arts and he would get fucked up before he went to go train and I'm like how do you train yeah yeah How? how I know people who do like crazy things and just do it high i guess because you're just so like used to it you're yeah, she, he's like very uh, used it's called to it. a functional smoker a functional yeah like functional alcoholic it perfect is. yeah yeah d- great there you analogy. go <laughs> great analogy there vanessa perfect that's it <laughs> you no, know i don't you just do what you gotta do <laughs> i don't judge it like personally i think like if i was like that guy and me didn't work out. I think because he was so dependent on weed for everything. Like it was like, right. we couldn't have a normal conversation if he wasn't high and we couldn't, yeah, you know, we couldn't um, like, he, he wouldn't open up to me if he wasn't a high. And like, because of that, that's what inhibited me from being close with him. I guess so that, yeah. like for me, like, I don't care if my girlfriend smoke it, but if I'm dating a guy, like, I just don't think that I could date like a habitual weed smoker. I don't know if I yeah. could. No, I got it. I I, yeah. I could see that. I I could agree with you on that because it's yeah. like, why do you need to be dependent on that just to make yourself feel comfortable? Just mm-hmm. be yourself. That's it. Like you can yeah. be yourself with or without it. Literally. Yeah. You know, for me with it, like I'm still myself, but I could do like a million things, you know, yeah. and I could be like, hey, and I'm still on chill mode, you know. Yeah. But but I also like to just be like cool, you know. Like he so, would get he would get angry. Everybody's different. Like you would get angry about stupid shit. Like I would like, you know, like someone's picture and he would be so mad. But if he was high, he wouldn't, he wouldn't get mad. Like, you know what I mean? So it was just too, yeah. it was weird. Yeah. That sounds very up and yes. down. Yeah. 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 Totally. Um, yeah. So I have one more question for you. And this is something I ask all of my podcast guests. So the question is, if you're walking down the street and you saw 20 year old Vanessa, right? Just walking up to you and you're like, oh my God, like, and you're seeing yourself at, as a 20 year old woman, right? Like just starting out in the world. And you went up to her and you gave her a great big hug. When you pulled away from her, like, what is the thing that you would tell her? <laughs> <laughs> you need you need to eat <laughs> i'm dead because at that time i think i was like working like i i probably had like a i think i was working like a job or two jobs at that time and i was just coffee walking the whole city uh-huh. running around working this and that that at a certain time i'm like did i eat and then i i, I became pretty skinny and thin oh. that I'm just like, yeah. Cause all I was doing is drinking coffee and smoking a cigarette. I, I don't yeah. even smoke cigarettes, but at that time I was just like, whatever, oh, because that's what, it, what was getting me to go. Yeah, yeah. I think it's so disgusting now, but yeah, me too. Um, but, um, yeah. So at that time I would, I think I would have been like, keep going, but eat. <laughs> yeah. You were, I was so busy at that time, running around, running the whole city, working from morning to till late in the evening going home changing partying all night sleeping for three hours waking up going to work and doing it all over again like mm-hmm. that was my routine every day like I was literally going out partying every day too so but also working and and doing other things so at that time I think I would have just been like slow down slow down calm down you know and I think 
that's what made me fast forward kind of like more chill and more like you know I don't need to be dependent on coffee and cigarettes all the time and forgetting to eat yeah you know lunch and dinner and things like that you know and now that's why I think I'm just like I'm more you know I've cut a lot of things out of my life in the past so now I think food is and is what food and and drinks and weed makes me happy and that's it (laughs) you're the best I love it I love the honesty you know and that's it so yeah I mean I feel like my 20s flew by so quick though you know I I had I had good times throughout my 20s but it was it was rocky at the same time but I I don't regret it you know I wouldn't I wouldn't um take anything back you know everything that you go through in life is a lesson learned so perfect um, yeah. That's how I feel too. I, I, there's so many things where I was like, Ooh, that, that was a rough patch, but I think I definitely needed to go through it, you know? Yeah. So. Listen in life, we, you know, this is people don't really lately. I've been thinking like about life and like, I don't know, it gets a little intense in my brain. Yes. Um, I also went to a movie screening with a friend and the movie was about life after death. I mean, what, is that does that sound right? Life yeah. After death, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, like what happens in your afterlife, and and it was literally like this guy, like he went to heaven, and he was like, "Where am I?" And and you know, it was just like it was like a a mind. It was a cool movie. It was yeah. actually cute. It was like a love story comedy, but like you're like, oh shit, like it makes you think. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I like to tell people, look. Everything you go through in life is a lesson. You learn from it, you grow from it, and you do the best that you can no matter what. We all got one life. Who know? Hopefully there's something else after, you know what I mean? It yeah. can get really deep. Yes, I know. <laughs> I mean, I could get really deep, but, you know, I just feel like also enjoy every day. Every day, make it best. You know, if you want to stay home and relax, stay home and relax. You want to go out, have a drink, go out, have a drink at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Who gives a <laughs> right. shit? Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. who cares? So what? You want to go eat a fucking tomahawk steak by yourself? Do it. Yes. Do it. I nobody, agree. nobody will, nobody can tell you anything. Nobody's going to stop you. The only person that will stop you is yourself. And if you don't just go and just do it. I love so, that. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Vanessa, thank you so much for taking time. Thank you. To come oh, I love on, it. My, on my podcast. I, I loved having you. We have so much in common. Thank you. Yes. And I loved it too. I'm going to hold you to that trip when we turn 40. <laughs> Listen, I, you know where I am. I'm yeah. down. I'm ready to go. I'll book, I'll book yeah. a flight right now. <laughs> I know. I'm like, actually, let's not even wait. Let's just I do just it. wanna go. I just need to get yeah. out of here for a little bit, you know? You know, maybe you and I should text about where we should just like maybe we should meet. Like I'll come like I'll yeah, fly we to could New meet York. like halfway or something. Well, or you I could think... come to New York and we could go somewhere. I'm down. Exactly, because I feel like New yeah. York is like a portal to go other places. So I could technically yeah. just fly to New York and we could go off somewhere. That'd be fun. Definitely. Let's girl, don't hold me to it. I'm ready. We could do like a, a <laughs> podcast on the road of like our travels. Ooh, that would be awesome. Yeah, that I would know. be fun. Be you so see? Cool. I know. We I got know. a lot of things. We got a lot of things going. <laughs> okay. All well, right, thank love. you again for stopping thank you. by. Yes. Thank you. I love this. Let's All do right. it more often. <laughs> yes, for sure. I'll see you soon. All right, girl. Take okay. care. Okay. Bye. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Well, dropouts, I hope you enjoyed that episode with Vanessa and I. We had some pretty fun banter going on. She probably could have talked for another hour with me. It was really easy flow there with the conversation. She loves to chat and so do I. Um, We got some great information about New York City. We got great, great information about dating. We got great information about her last meal. I mean... Her last meal is truly unbeatable, in my opinion. (laughs) So um, if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe, like, comment, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And if you are listening on any streaming platform, please leave us a review. And if not, I'm just happy you're here, truly. So I will see you guys next time on The Luxury Dropout. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.
That's a wrap for this episode of The Luxury Dropout. Make sure to visit stephaniejoplin.com to find all of Steph's episodes, including full podcast descriptions and photos of her guests. Until next time, besties.